If we look back over the past quarters, we continue to see cutting revenue targets, cutting jobs, cutting costs, now cutting profitability. Um, is it just that the situation is deteriorating before your very eyes? I think you can take a two separate points in time. One is just flip one year back, where we are all still sitting here and believing that we would have uh, rate hikes by the ECB throughout 19. Nothing of that has happened, so that's obviously one part, uh, which is uh, from the outside. The second part is the macro that we can see um, around the world. So that's been deteriorating throughout uh, 2019. Um, and on the capital markets day, we already said that uh, we will not uh, achieve higher revenues in 2018 than in 20. Uh, in 2019 than in 2018, and that obviously flows through the whole P&L down to the net result. So in that sense, we have just um, uh, reiterated our uh, uh, guidance that we have done uh, weeks ago. The problem you cited is uh, negative rates that keep getting more and more negative after the ECB lowered again in September. There's been a crescendo of concern about negative rates. I spoke with David Solomon, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, earlier this week. He said when we look back on, uh, on the history of negative rates, it will prove to be a, a, a very poor experiment. How do, you, how do we get out of it, though? I think that is the most frightening question, in all, in all honesty, that it is completely unclear how we get out of, uh, of this drama to a certain extent. And I think that is why everybody is getting uh, a little bit more scared by the quarter, uh, because it's unclear how to, how to reverse the situation to something that allows interest rates at the end of the day to do what it's supposed to do, which is steering capital flows in an economy. And a negative interest rate doesn't do that properly. I think that's pretty clear. At, at first, no Nobody wanted to talk about the possibility of passing this on to consumers. We've started to hear um, some. We've started to hear some of that, not only from German banks. UBS, uh, Axel Weber was talking to me about it. Um, your crosstown rivals here were talking to me about it the last time um, they did their earnings. Yesterday, even Olaf Scholz dared to bring it up. When a German politician talks about passing negative rates on to the consumer, you know it must be bad. How can you do this? Now, yeah, in general, I think the issue is that the German banking system especially, but also some of the other northern European countries, are uh, heavily relying on, on deposits as one uh, stable, uh, good funding source. Um, and if you now adjust pricing for this, you need to keep in mind that there might be a behavioral aspect to that. So what you want to avoid is that you scare customers off in in, in bigger chunks so that all of a sudden your balance sheet starts to move a little bit more than you would normally have, have liked it to move. That's that why everybody's trying to kind of do it in small steps and getting closer to it. The good message is, I think, in general, it has been understood that passing on at least parts of the negative interest rates to parts of the customers, not to uh, Joe Sixpack, obviously, or Herman the German, uh, but in general, you need to, you need to deal with the, with the burden of, of, uh, of these negative rates in a very very simple equation, you can say Commerce has about uh, two, uh, in excess of 200 billion of, of, um, uh, of deposits. Just apply, and it's the wrong number, but just simply apply minus 50 as being uh, the cost of that uh, rather than being a funding source. And then you pretty much have a good idea why the issue is uh, getting more, uh, more important by the day. So w wouldn't you call this a crisis um, right now? And if so, who can rescue you? Christine Lagarde is coming in from the IMF to the ECB. The IMF has said that negative rates are uh, detrimental to banks. Um, Olaf Scholz, OK, his coalition is losing power by the minute. Uh, but can the finance ministry come in and save you? Who, who can do it? I think the general view has to start with, with where are we on the macro. And yes, after a so-called super cycle, we are probably in a part that I would call late cycle. Uh, but still, we are, I think, in, in positive territory in, in, in general terms. And uh, we shouldn't forget that the ECB's initial uh, goal for that kind of policy was to make sure that uh, we protect, uh, amongst other things, the European Union and the, the euro to a certain extent. And I think that has been successful, it's pretty clear. Uh, the interesting question is to what extent is it successful, to what extent does it really produce uh, additional positive benefit? And I think part of the discussion that we are all having right now, will a further cut of interest rates, for example, instead of boosting economy, uh, start people making think about, for example, their pensions and other stuff, so that they even increase their savings rate rather than um, increasing um, uh, consumption, which is, I think, somewhere at the core of the discussion. And in 
that context, uh, again, I think Christine Lagarde just started, and at least she has the normal 100 days to come up with her ideas. Um, but I think she is in, fully gra in full grasp of the situation, and I'm pretty optimistic that she might come up with some surprising ideas. All right. So the. Uh Yesterday with Schultz, I also went over to the ECB to talk to Andrea Andrea about um, banking union, which the push seems to be back to get banking union over the 10-yard line. Not um, an analogy you might understand 100 percent because it's from American football. But the idea being that if banking union is deepened, we can start getting cross-border mergers. And this could be a solution to the problem. It, are you optimistic for banking union now? And do you think cross-border uh, mergers cross-border consolidation is the solution? I think the way you look at this is a bit of, uh, of a one-sided view. I think the, the, the view Olaf Scholz uh, brought was much more balanced in the sense that he said uh, part of a banking union also needs to be level playing field and equal treatment of everybody, um, including how deposit insurance systems are handled between countries or more prominently in Germany between several banking groups. Um, having one system there would definitely help in the sense of and making sure that everybody has to take his own uh, share um, of the burden. Um, secondly, I think banking union, uh, which would make for a better, bigger uh, European financial market, is something that we badly need also in competition to the Chinese and, uh, and U.S. banking markets. So I think the initiative is, is much more um, uh, guarded towards that um, part of the thing. But it's also clear if we would have banking union, and I think there's a long way to go, uh, if we would have, bank, uh, have banking union, it would probably also make the system more efficient in total, which might well be then uh, 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 consolidation and other stuff that might be more effective. Than All right, before. so another voice added to the list, Tom, of people really pushing for banking union. The problem is it's still pretty far off, and that means consolidation is as well.